So I just got done doing the absolutely coolest Disney thing I could ever think of while on the ocean and visiting the beach. It was amazing. My family had a great time. I want to tell you all about it. So this thing, we signed up for almost over a year ago. We got the absolute best price because we booked so far out. We booked with a third party travel agent. Shout out to Kristen. Take a look at her link below. Highly recommend those if you've never done Disney before or if you're looking for a higher level of service because you do Disney all the time. Check out those third party Disney trip planners. Now I kind of spilled the beans a little bit, but that's right, I just got back from my first Disney cruise with my family and I want to tell you all about it. I've never been on a cruise before and I had no idea what to expect. Let me tell you, it was way easier than going into the airport and getting on a plane and just as safe and secure. From the moment we pulled into the parking garage and the porters are there to help you get your bags off out of your car and onto the ship, even before you park, we're already way better than the airport in my opinion. Everyone got a park undercover, which was totally awesome. We breezed through security and they were even accommodating to help get my kids in Stax film through security. How cool is that? We breezed through, checked all our documents because we packed correctly, huge pro tip. And I'll be doing a different video about tips and a full longer review of everything on the boat here shortly. I'm trying to get through all these cool things that I want to tell everyone about. We walked through this giant gangway onto the boat and entered into the huge atrium where they announced our name. It was pretty, pretty cool. Uh, the kids absolutely loved it. The atrium is like a three deck entryway with elevators, veranda, whatever you like to call it. There were characters and let me tell you, there are little Disney touches everywhere it doesn't feel like you're on a floating theme park which i truly appreciate we were on the disney dream which holds about 4,000 people it's 1100 feet long blew my mind um and it was packed but you know what even though it was packed i still feel like we had tons of space the first day we got on the boat we let we're leaving about 4 35 we got on the boat we had everything we needed and we were able to sit down and have lunch. We didn't go to the buffet. We really enjoyed sitting down and having lunch that day. Shout out to our wait staff for lunch that day. Hey, I just wanna take a little break here in the middle. Not only am I talking about Disney cruises, but I also have a, some other content out about Disney parks. My family and I go a bunch and I hope that you check us out. I'm also starting a new channel with my wife called All For The Mouse Podcast and Travel. We have a podcast that's up with only two episodes from last year. We kind of fell off, but check it out if you think about it. We're also on YouTube, just getting started. Now, if you've never been on a cruise ship before like myself, I had no idea what to expect out of the muster drill. And I realized that that's super important. So we went to the muster drill and just a pro tip, if you're taking little kids, don't show up 15 minutes early. It's not a big advantage. Show up right on time, right at 4 p.m. when you're supposed to be there. And I mean, it was easy to remember because everything closed down at three. We got to the muster drill, got through that. It was a little hard for our kids to sit still and they definitely waited uh, not that great while we were going through the muster drill, but whatever, totally fine. The Disney sail away party was absolutely cool. They had drinks, there was a huge party, tons of music, tons of dancing, and a great show for the kids. They had an absolute blast. What made it even better was that in between us getting on the boat at a, from 12.31 o'clock and the muster drill, our room was already ready. Basically, as soon as we walked onto the boat, our bags were there. We were able to settle in and get set up. It was totally awesome. If you've never been on a boat though too, the rooms are a little smaller than average and we fit a family of four in there. Okay, and you could go up to five in an estate room, but we were fine with four people. I'll take a look at the room. We had our crib out and this really cool bed for to fold down. Once the sail away party was underway, we pulled out of the port in Fort Lauderdale we were on the open seas, really just the Atlantic side of Florida, but who's counting? We got our first plate of dinner that night and it was a pretty cool opportunity because we had the same servers the entire time throughout the cruise. They just followed us from the restaurant to restaurant. We had the 545 seating, which I think was really good. Shout out to Bella and Chantel for being amazing wait staff while we were on the boat. One thing that took us a while to figure out and a huge reason why we went on to the cruise ship, especially the Disney cruise ship, were the kids clubs. There was one for our youngest and one for our oldest. And really, if you're anywhere from six months to a teenager, there's a kids club on the boat for you somewhere. 
It took us a few days to figure out the right times to get our kids in the kids club, but we ended up settling on a far four hour block that they wanted to go to kids club for and during our youngest nap time. And we had an absolutely amazing time in the adults only area. That's something I think the cruise ship definitely gets right is that there's adults only areas and family areas. We all know how the hot tubs are at Disney. They're full of kids but it was so nice to be able to go up to the hot tubs in the front of the boat where the adults only area was and there's no kids in the hot tubs. You go to the family area, there's about 500 kids in one hot tub. You know what I'm talking about if you've been to Disney World. All throughout our sailing days, we had a day at sea, a day in Nassau, another day at sea, Castaway Key, and then we returned into Fort Lauderdale. Dinners were amazing. Lunches at the buffets were out of this world for a buffet because they rotated and they had some standards. Disney Cruise has a really good snack setup. So for kids, you have unlimited soft drinks, access to milk, which did run out a few times, but you can find some other dispenser for the milk, unlimited coffee, and then great snack opportunities. There's a place on deck 11 by the boat that only serves chicken tenders, hamburgers, pizza, and cold sandwiches all day. There's even an ice cream place where you can have unlimited ice cream, which is totally cool. If you have younger kids, but they're old enough to serve themselves, they can go do it all on their own, no big deal. One thing I will say though, are there are two shallow pools in the middle of the ship. They did get kind of crowded. They're only about two feet deep and they got super warm. Our kids also loved the splash area, which is the only place little ones can go because if they're not potty trained, they can't go into the boat. On the adult side, there were a few pools, plenty of bars, and a couple hot tubs as well, so that was super nice. One thing I will say about the Disney drinks is there was always a cocktail of the day, which was like six bucks, and when you get to the Castaway Key, which is our private island, you can also get that same deal if you just ask them, which is super nice. We didn't get off the boat in Nassau, but we enjoyed a really nice day on the boat because half of everyone got off of Nassau and it was so nice to have some room to breathe. I will say one thing that I noticed were the elevators during big times when you had to go down and everyone was going down to their meals and coming up, especially between that first and second seating shift for dinner, the elevators got super crowded. So we were on a good part of the deck. We were in the back of the boat. We had this really cool partial view room, uh, partial ocean view room, which I really enjoyed and we saved quite a few hundred dollars on it too. But we were always able to walk down to dinner and it was always a struggle to get back up to our room to get an elevator that wasn't full. But because of where we were coming up from dinner, we were one of the first people to get an elevator if it was empty. One thing that's really unique to Disney cruises that I think is really awesome is the pirate night. So as we were coming away, as we were coming out of Nassau into Castaway Key, we had a pirate night. And instead of a formal night, everyone dresses up like a pirate. So if you've never been on a Disney cruise ship, bring your best costume for pirate night because it's awesome. There's tons of videos out there about Disney cruise night costumes. I brought a white linen shirt and some like a cummerbund thing and a bandana and I was fine. I did get a little warm, so I had to shed it, it didn't last long. That night too, there was a big pirate party on the top of the boat, which was pretty cool. Deck 11, 12, all the characters were there. It was a pretty fun time and if your kids can hang out late that goes well into the night and there's fireworks which is totally awesome for all your parents out there especially if you have someone that will come with you and watch your kids while they're in the room at night there's tons of bars and tons of lounges for you to hang out in there's pubs there's nightclubs there's family clubs there's adults only clubs it's pretty nice there's also a great spa on the boat and i highly recommend you buying the rainforest package which it gets you into this cool water therapy area which is nice if you do get away from your kids or if they're playing somewhere else on the boat you can sneak away and you can have unlimited access to that so pre-purchase that my sister-in-law did come along with us my sister-in-law and my wife ended up buying the wine package so that was two hundred dollars for four nights of wine basically and they saved the old bottle and brought it out to you uh, at the table too the next night, which was really nice. It was such a good deal. There's tons of opportunity on the boat to have a good time, no matter what your budget is. Finally, Castaway Key was absolutely amazing. There's a kids only, there's a kids beach, there's an everybody beach. There's 8,000 chairs on the island, which is pretty cool because there's only 4,000 people on the boat. And if you want to ride bikes or snorkel or go scubing, there's tons of activities you can free book. There's a 5K and there's tons of stuff that you can do for free or just lounge on the beach. One thing that I noticed never being on a cruise is you get off about 8, 8, 30 and you have to be back on the boat by 4, 45 or it's leaving you. And you've heard of this thing called Pier Runners. I didn't see anyone, but it is something that happens on some of the other cruise ships and there's tons of videos online about it. It shouldn't be too bad, but that's just one thing I noticed is I really wanted to hang out on the beach a lot longer, but we were kind of timed. So enjoy what you could get. 
They also brought all of the fixings for a beach barbecue and we even saw the same wait staff on the island. They came off the boat to work the barbecue stand while we were eating there. And shout out to Bella for just being a really great server, uh, not only on the boat, but off the boat too. Checkout was super easy and super efficient. Uh, and if you have cash, make sure you bring, save some for your porter, because really the, the pro tip is to get a porter to help you get your bags from the pickup area through customs to your car. Save 10, 15, 20 bucks, however many bags you have, and tip that person, because they're gonna help you get through security super fast. But I had an absolutely amazing time on the boat. We booked a retainer, so I think we're going to 2026. In 2025, I think we're going to Sandals. We like to take a winter vacation with our family, but I am looking forward to getting on the boat again, only when the kids are older. I would not do it again with a four and a two year old. It was a lot. I really just kind of wanted them to be a little more self-sufficient so I can have a little bit more downtime. Um, I, I personally was a little worried about getting them to all their reservations so they didn't miss out on all the fun. So I had such a good time. I hope you enjoyed all these fun clips. I'm gonna do a lot more content on this as well because I think there's a lot of stuff that I wanna share with you all about taking a Disney cruise because I think it's important. Thank you so much for your time and attention and I'll catch you on the next one. Check out some of my other videos coming up about the Disney cruise as well as 